Hi folks, well, I've just finished one video and I heard something and I thought, oh, let do one of this as well. Because this is something I heard that term um, for years. I've never spoken about, I've never actually shared an opinion on this thing because I didn't actually understand it. So, what I'll do is, first of all, I'll play it. Can't play much because of copyright. Copyright is a situation that you can't play much of anything because of copyright issues so I'll, I'll play that 10 seconds hopefully not much longer okay it is from this uh, audio bible this is matthew 12 you'll find this in then one was brought to him who was demon possessed blind and mute and he healed him so that the blind and mute man both spoke and saw and all the multitudes were amazed could this be the son of david now when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. But Jesus knew their thoughts. Right. Now, if you look at the scripture after that point, you'll then see that that's where it's mentioned about blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. Now, that had often been a case in church that was discussed because yeah, that was the only understandable, well, from what we understood, that was the only sin that couldn't be forgiven. So, oh, what the heck is that then? Well, we, we were all surmising, well, what could that be? What on earth would that thing be? But that thing, according to Matthew 12, where it's actually mentioned, is where God is working, the Holy Spirit is working through the Lord, through delivering this person and healing this person. And then someone said, This is of the devil. But well, that is blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. And if you accuse the Holy Spirit of being the devil, that's basically. What blaspheming against the Holy Spirit is. Now you could change that to being if you say that the work of the Holy Spirit is the work of the devil, but that's pretty much the same thing. Um, but that's what, and it's so simple. Now yeah, for years we were trying to think, well, what on earth could that be? It's in the scripture. Just before the Lord talks about, you know, you can say what you want about. The Lord, but you, what you say about against the Holy Spirit, your blaspheming against the Holy Spirit won't be forgiven. Matthew 12. So just a bit earlier than when he said that, he's talking about what is actually the blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. So like, Jesus, right, okay. And that's the point. That in so many cases, we can overlook the obvious and in that one we have for years overlooked the obvious we just didn't see it i never heard that preached upon in church explained in a church never heard that because again they keep away from it it's part of the reason why they keep away from it because they themselves many of the churches i've been in have blasphemed against the holy spirit yeah, they said they don't believe in you know tongues, they don't believe in healing, they don't believe in you know that the Holy Spirit is supposed to come for us now. They think that's that's dodgy stuff. You're very close to blaspheming against the Holy Spirit now. That's why they wouldn't preach on it, you say. They didn't understand it. But it's right there. You know, just a few words before the words blaspheming against the Holy Spirit is mentioned, the explanation for that is there. And it's like, I've been a Christian since 1994. And it's like, wow. You know, 26 years now. And just through the audio Bible being on in the background, I was just you know doing the point of um exporting the last video as an mp4 
and then heard that oh really it's okay right okay so i played it again it's like, right yeah that's what it said okay as simple as that then yeah <laughs> i better share that then. <laughs> I mean, it's quite possible that you know in other places they, they understood that years ago um that's the thing about it, is it uh yeah your understanding is a piece of the jigsaw part of the purpose of these videos is to share whatever understanding god gives me i share it so that i'm trying to share my pieces or my piece of the jigsaw so other people can get my piece and then with their piece and my piece and maybe a few other people doing the same you can see the picture a little bit more clearer yeah so marvelous absolutely marvelous i mean at the end of the last video i was just talking about the fact of this audio bible that i've got from matthew to the end of acts and then I just happened to go into Matthew 12 to play some. And it's three minutes in. So it's like, right, okay. Absolutely brilliant. Just fantastic. I mean, that is beautiful. Yeah, the simplicity of it. You yeah, know, what is blaspheming the Holy Spirit? Oh, there you go. <laughs> it's there, isn't it, really? Yeah. It's not complicated. Yeah, you know, we were all trying to figure out what it was, this complicated thing that was unforgivable, and it's like, oh, okay, that's it. Labeling God's work as a devil's work, basically. Yeah. Well, that's unforgivable. That's um if you do that you're in big trouble. The problem is, where is that? Where's the line for that? Because like, if you have someone who's a Christian and you accuse them of not being a Christian, you accuse them of being something really bad. Is that blaspheming against the Holy Spirit? Because I had that recently that someone accused me of that. So did that person blaspheme against the Holy Spirit? Hmm. It is fascinating really it opens up a whole new area of okay um how far does that reach uh it may reach incredibly far yeah probably not though probably not but it may do but even that i mean is that really unforgivable can you be forgiven of that if you really repent yeah I think you probably can. I think you, if you really repent, then yeah, I think you probably can. I think you can be forgiven of that. Difficult, isn't it, really? I mean, if you've got a loving God who loves his people, will he forgive his people of that? I mean, one would hope so. One would indeed. That's one thing with the virus, eh? there are more people watching my videos. One released two days ago, the Sharon Tate one. Sharon Tate, a terror ending, that's already had 13 views. Well, hey! <laughs> Double figures! <laughs> well, I don't think I'm going to get overly excited by that, really. Um, as good as it is. <laughs> so yeah. Uh the last one's done anyway, that's now available for people to, to watch. It was a bit long, I did apologise at the end. Thirty one minutes, yeah. It's a long time. You know, so hopefully I didn't waffle too much on it. With this one is yeah. I mean, I could go on more about the fact that the church hasn't spoken about this when they should have done. Um, you know, all that. I could certainly say all that stuff. 
I don't see the point. Uh, really, but it's good the way that um, yeah, it's something that was not understood for so many years. Something that was not the, the big, yeah, misunderstood thing. You know, this this massive thing that could never be forgiven. What would it be? And there it is, right there, in the same line of conversation. It's right there. Yeah, so it's brilliant. Well, there you go. That I do for this one. I just thought I had to share that because you don't know how many other people would, would be in that situation. And it's where, yeah, yeah, the Holy Spirit worked through the Lord and delivered someone who was possessed and healed that person. And then the Pharisees come on and yeah, accuse that of being the devil that was doing the work and not God. And that's that's feeling against the Holy Spirit. So there you go. We can tick that one away now. We can give it a tick. We understand that one. Now there's just the rest of the 727 million things that we don't understand that we need to tick. So, you know, you know 26 years to get to that one. How long to get to the next one? I don't even know what the next one is. But anyway, you take care. God bless. And be wise in this time. And use the time wisely. You know, we've got however much time. I mean, there were people even talking today about it possibly being a, a much, much longer time of lockdown. Because they're, they're expecting it to be quite likely that there will be a second wave of this virus that once we come out of lockdown there'll be a second wave of it in which case we're going to lockdown again and um, so maybe the best way to do it is have lockdown for a bit longer and then yeah you won't need necessarily to have a second wave but time will tell with the situation it's you know new ground we are in a very interesting situation here. Yeah. yeah, what's going to happen, we don't know. Um, I certainly think it's a case where we need to be aware of certain like, gathering mm -hmm. and of being sensible with this social distancing. You've got to be sent, unless God has told you, yeah, if God wants you to pray for somebody, then go and pray for them. Go and lay hands on them. Yeah do all that because generally speaking we know biblically speaking god says if you drink poison it won't hurt you if you are acting in his way and his will and you drink poison it won't hurt you if you get bit by a snake you won't be affected by it if you're in his way and his will um so if god wants you to do something which puts you in a position in the like the hot zone of this virus, then that hot zone won't affect you. So if you're going into it out of your own will, then you've got to be aware that you're putting yourself and many other people in danger. So take care. God bless. I will speak to you soon. Hopefully not as soon as the last one and this one, because that was very, very quick in between. So, okay. <laughs>